Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am very excited for today's video because I am finally talking about the new Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. This came out last week. It has been all over social media, very hyped, one of the most hyped palettes I've seen in a while. And I did order this from Sephora. It got here a few days ago and I have used it a couple times now. And I'm very excited to show you this look, show you the other look I did with this, and go over the palette and lots of comparisons. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I'm a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup with a definite soft spot for indie makeup and high-end makeup. And I tend to take a pretty analytical approach to my content and my collection as a whole. And I tend to be pretty thorough in my reviews. Um, and I have new content every week be it reviews or using things that I already know and love, and I'd love to have you subscribe. Okay, so this is the new I Need a Nude palette. I keep almost saying I need a new palette, which I do not need a new palette. Um, this is one of Natasha Denona's midi palettes. So she has her minis, her midis, and then her full size. Um, I have almost all of these midis, really love them. Great quality, reasonable price point. I just enjoy them. Um, th this is an expansion of her I Need a Nude series. So that started with her lipsticks. I Need a Nude lipsticks, which I do not have any of, but there are some really beautiful shades there. She has an I Need a Nude highlighter, then the lip liner. So this is just an expansion of that nude, uh, neutral series of hers. This retails for $69. I bought this from Sephora and I had a gift card. So I spent about $30 on it, which I'm very not mad about. Um, and it has 15 shades, including some new formulas for her, which is part of the reason I wanted this. It looked kind of basic and boring and neutral, but in a good way, but had some her sparkling foiled formula which came out recently and i love and then it had a new formula that i just had to try so this is the outer pocket back package package <laughs> and it looks like typical natasha denona packaging um the back has all of the ingredients per shade and then each shade has its number so like stone is 493 cm for creamy matte so if you're ever confused of what kind of formula they are they're all right there. So you've got your creamy matte formula, which there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's, so there's seven creamy mattes. There's no cream to powders in here. We've got two of her metallic formula in here. So travertine and what is the other one? Whisper. Um, and then we've got a few of her sparkling foils, which came out first in the one of the face palettes where it was like eyeshadows and blush slash highlighters, and then really appeared in an eyeshadow palette in the Yucca palette, which came out in the spring. So we've got three of the sparkling foiled metallics. So those are Ella, Muse, and Filigree. I am wearing one of those today. And then we have her two new formulas, the glossy uh, finish, the glossy, I think it's glossy wet, which is Sheen. And then we have the Sparkling Wet, which is uh, Delilah and Mia, and I have one of those in my eyes as well today. Really, really was intrigued by those and really excited to show you what those look like in comparison to other things. If you do to buy this from Natasha Denona's website herself, a lot of influencers are starting to get affiliate codes with her and those save you 15%, I believe. So do check out one of those. Um, I don't have one, but I, my friend uh, Riley Seeking Shifts just got one, so I would recommend using some ones. Um, and then this is the palette itself. It's got this 3D uh, plastic design on the front, kind of like what she did for Retro Glam. It's got the standard holes in the back, so if you are new to Natasha Denona, all of her shadows are magnetic, and so there's these little things to pop them out. So if you become part of the Natasha Denona ecosystem, like I have, you can mix and match. Um, you can make your own palette out of these. Um, the midis are all the same size. The large pants are all the same size, except for Metropolis, because that is a large palette, but with 28 of these instead of 15. Um, and then when you open it up, you get a nice mirror. I still have that on here, so I don't blind everyone. Uh, and then the palette. So 
All of the mats are her creamy matte formula that she's known for. Uh, some people find the cream to powder hard to work with. It is one of my favorite formulas. I really love it. So a little sad it's not there. And then you can see it's got a mix of more soft metallics and then these really sparkly ones. So really beautiful, really neutral, kind of cool neutral. So she describes this as a cool tone palette with muted rosy and nude shades. So it's it's muted rosy and taupe. And then there's some browns. So I'm all here for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point the camera down, we're gonna do swatches. And then after I swatch out the whole palette, we're gonna go through and compare it to her other palettes and compare shades in this to other similar shades and other from her palettes and other things. So this is gonna be a long video. <laughs> I will have timestamps below for everything, um, and at the end I will show you this look that I did with the palette, including another one as well that I did off camera. Okay, so welcome to my arm and welcome to the palette. Again, this is the palette. Here's a nice up close version. Sorry, it's a little hard to see what I'm doing when I film like this. Really beautiful. I know some of these shades aren't going to be perfect for me, like I know this is going to be kind of ashy, but whatever. We'll deal. Um, so really excited. So I'm going to go through these, um, by formula. So I'll do the mattes first, the metallics and so on. And I'm going to read you what she describes the color as and kind of what I see the color as. So, so starting with the mattes, I'm going to go lightest, darkest. So I'll start with the shade fair. So fair is described as a light misty rose. I definitely see it's a very pale one, but there is a little bit of a, I would say more peach than rose. You can see there's a little bit of kick up in the pan. Mesh is described as a light dusty rose. I would say it's just a very light taupe to me. There is fair. So a good highlight shade for me maybe, um, but for someone pale, I've seen a few people where this is their skin color. And then this is mesh. This I would say is more taupe than rose. It does have that little bit of a warm base, that like warm rosy base, but it does lean a little purpley taupe to me. The next shade I'm gonna do is stone, which is described as a light medium warm taupe. And I would say it's just a gradient above mesh, but we'll see. Uh, then we've got tender. which is described as a just matte medium taupe. So there's stone. You can see next to each other that does pull more taupe and you do see more of the rosiness in uh, mesh. And then there's tender, just a nice taupe. But I would say a cool taupe. Taupe can be kind of warm, kind of cool. I would say this is right in the middle, pretty neutral to cool. And then I will do these last three. So Wit is described as a light warm rose. That looks peach <laughs> on my olive undertone at least. Vague is described as a matte medium warm dusty rose. To me, I would say this is like a muted terracotta. And then Silhouette is described as a coffee bean brown, which I think is exactly what it is. So there's wit, that is pulling peachy on my olive undertone. There's vague, I've already used those, really like vague. Um, and there is silhouette. I definitely think this is like more muted terracotta and this is more peachy. I don't really see the rose. I see more rose in mesh than, uh, than wit. Okay, and then the two shimmer regular metallics are Whisper and Travertine. So Whisper is described as a metallic light nude pink. I haven't touched it, wow, that is metallic. <laughs> and then Travertine is a metallic soft amber. Really excited for Travertine. I would say that's taupe, but whatever. Uh, that is definitely metallic light nude pink. It's kind of a 
a shade like what you would see Pat McGrath put as the highlight shade in a palette. <laughs> and then Travertine, yeah, I don't really get amber from that. Amber and like the way we tend to think of amber or an amber as in the resin. Um, there is a little bit of warmth to it, but it's pretty like neutral taupe, more satin, not as shiny as the other one, but that's a good, I would just put that on the lid, blend the edges and call it a day for a quick one and done. Okay, and then the sparkling metallic formula, sparkling foiled, I should say, uh, that is gonna be Muse, Filigree, and Ella, I believe. Uh, yes, so we'll do Ella is described as a sparkling foiled warm fawn. It's really pretty. Filigree is a sparkling foiled neutral brown, medium neutral brown. That's gonna be a go-to for me. I don't really see the sparkling foiled aspect, especially compared to the shades in Yucca, and I will do comparisons after this. And then Muse is a sparkling foiled champagne. That looks more like the sparkling foils before. These look more like satins than metallics. And these look more, so that was Ella. And that's definitely, I would say, yeah, fawn. It's like a light brown with a rosy undertone. There is filigree, that's beautiful. I'm gonna wear that all the time. <laughs> I have a little bit of that on my outer corner, but I'm gonna wear that all the time. And then, there is Muse, and I, that's what I used the first time I used this palette. It is very sparkly, really beautiful. I really like this. I do not think I have room <laughs> for the last couple shades, um, but I don't... Filigree is kind of sparkly and foiled. It's kind of the border between her normal metallics and this, but this is definitely sparkly and foiled. This looks just metallic, but we'll do comparisons to other palettes and we'll see. So we've got Delilah and Mia and Sheen. So Delilah and Mia are supposed to be her sparkling what effect. So this is Delilah. That's what I have all over my lid. It feels very thin and silky, really pretty. Uh, Mia feels the same. So it feels like it's melting under my finger. And then I have a bit of Muse left. <laughs> and then Sheen. So Sheen is her glossy wet formula. And I have that on as a highlighter today and it's so pretty. It is very much just a glossy wet effect. So here is Delilah. And you can see it's brown. She describes Delilah as a silver brown. Oh wet effect silver brown, and I would say that is brown with silver sparkle. Mia is the sparkling wet icy pink. I'd say that is appropriately described. And then there's Sheen, which is described as a warm champagne. I would say that's like peach champagne, but like a just a wet effect peach. Really excited to see more of these formulas in general from her, but especially these new ones. You can see how much shinier they are to these down here. So that is the palette swatched out. I'm gonna wipe off my arm and then we're gonna do some comparisons. So I'm gonna start with side-by-side -side comparisons to her other mini palettes, just so you can see them. And we'll do some swatches uh, to similar shades. And then I'm gonna show it next to some other Natasha Denona palettes and then some other palettes and shadows that I think have similar wet effects so we can kind of see how they compare. So I have almost all of the middies right here. So let's just go through them one by one. So here is Sunrise, which was her first. I wouldn't really say these are similar at all. There might be yeah, I don't see any similar shades really at all. Uh, Sunrise is very warm. It's very fitting for the name. Really love it for these shades right here. But you can see Laurel is maybe the only similar one to anything here. 
but not really because it's kind of that warm champagne. I would say it's like maybe a metallic version of Sheen. You can see the difference there in formula. So this is her normal metallic formula in that's Laurel. And then there is Sheen. Very different. Can't really say there's anything else to compare that to, so I'll move you aside. And then we've got the Love Palette. I was very happy I got this for like $20 because I do not wear these tones very often, but I do really like some of these, like Soul. Um, very pink. The only thing I could see someone wanting to know are like first versus fair. Those are pretty similar. So this is first, this is fair. So first, fair. First is actually creamier. Fair is a little dry in comparison. Um, this has, but they're very similar. I think there's a little bit more pink to first and a little more peach to fair. Um, and I think fair is a little lighter on camera, it's definitely pulling lighter. And then next we have bronze. Again, this is very warm, so there's not really any. It's warm and copper. We don't have any of that here. Um, these are all kind of orangey based. Don't really see anything that I would compare and swatch side by side. Do really like this palette, even though it's pretty monochromatic for me. And then here is Zendo. This was my first of these. Uh, no, it wasn't. Bronze and Glamour. Everyone hates Zendo. I really love Zendo. Um, don't think there's any direct comparisons. This is very just warm brown. Um, I can show you like Calm is for cream to powder, but it's much more peach than either of these. So you can see here is Calm. There's a bit more of that orangey peach. And then here is Wit and Vague. Much more warm peach. These are a little more cool. Don't really think anything else is comparable. And then here is Pastel. Controversial palette. I would say there's a zero comparisons here. This is even more peachy because it's a pastel peach. And you know, as pastels do, it's kind of neon-y and doesn't want to show up, but very different. And then here is the one everyone was comparing it to. This is the Glam palette. And I don't think these are actually that similar. So you've got a lot of these silver tones here, which you do not have here. These are very silver. You've got some golds here. I will compare this brown and then like blend and smoke, but these are really cool. I hate the naming convention for this. Like transition is, I can't even use, it's too pale, but let's do, let's show crease versus maybe stone. I would say that her new shades are less silky. So here is crease and here is stone. Stone is definitely lighter and more rosy taupe. And then I'll do blend and tender. So here's blend. You can see it's much more it's my good transition shade. It's definitely neutral brown versus tender. Wow, these do not want to swatch. Definitely more taupe, and you can see it builds up kind of cool and purple. And then let's do outer eyelid down here. Love this shade. Next to Ella and Filigree. 
So outer eyelid from Glam. Not the shiniest, but a really pretty brown. And then there's Ella, much lighter. And Filigree, definitely has more silver to it. So you can see these looked pretty brown before, but now that they're next to a brown, <laughs> you can definitely tell this is more that fawn color, a little rosiness to it. And this is definitely uh, neutral brown, but with that like taupe sparkle and definitely shinier. Definitely tell the sparkling foiled. It's a little more foiled, definitely shinier. Okay, and then we've got retro here. This is very berry. You can see I haven't pulled that off yet. Wouldn't really compare most of these. These are all more berry. Um, even things like Go Go and Patty. If I put those over here, like Go Go is definitely darker and more berry. Patty, more orangey. Um, more cranberry, I should say. Um, Maud is way more pale than either of these. It's almost white with a bit of a pink. Vivian. We'll put Vivian between them. M even more pink. And then Nude Mauve. Put down here. You can definitely see it's more neutral with a hint of mauve. And that's putting that mauve shade up against these shows you how much more taupe they are. And then I wouldn't really say Mia is similar to Glitz or Psychedelic, but I'll swatch them. So there's Mia, Psychedelic, and Glitz. They're all sparkling pinks kind of running out of room, I'll do my hand. So here is Mia, and you can see it's that wet effect. And there's psychedelic, La kind of wet effect, but like less so and more sparkly. And then Glitz has more base to it, more like gold duochrome to the pink. Psychedelic's pretty, but I think Psychedelic was like her step to this. I think this is a better shadow. So if you like Psychedelic, I think this is a better version of that idea. And then Opart is darker and cooler than any of those. So I think we're good there. And then we've got My Dream, which was last fall's. Last, yeah, this time last year, I think. Really not, let's see, we can do Nurture next to Tender. These new shades are definitely drier. So there's Nurture, much more neutral. And here's Tender. I think these new shades work really well, but they're definitely a little drier, and you can see the taupe there. I hope that's coming across. This is like it looks cool here, but then it's starting to pull just like neutral once it's next to the topiness of Tender. <laughs> Most of these are way too different. I'll put Unity next to the other peachy tones just so you can see it. I'll put it right here. And it's got even more orange to it. Closest would be maybe that, but still pretty different. And then Yucca, <laughs> there's no comparisons here. Yucca is her olive palette. It is my new favorite. Yucca is her olive pal palette. It is my new favorite, but I do wanna show you, maybe on the back of my hand, because I'm out of arm space. Uh, what I mean about the sparkling foils in this versus this. So in Yucca, we had four of these. We had Plantasia, Komorabi, Elysian, and Machia. And you can see just in the pan that they're more foiled. So I'll do like Plantasia is going to be more similar to the Muse in texture. But you can see these are more foiled. So yeah, I'll just do the back of my hand. So we've got Plantasia, 
you can see just the foiledness of them, the texture. There's a lot more sparkle and texture. And when we put the three from this palette, Muse is the most textured. I'll just put this here. And similar to these, these two are more foiled than her normal metallic, but they don't have the sparkling. They don't have this indie level of shine and sparkle. But I don't think that's bad. I think they're a nice wearable everyday version um, if, you, if these were too sparkly for you. But they're definitely, I wouldn't, they don't feel like the same formula. Filigree is beautiful, but I wouldn't really say it's the same formula as Plantasia or Machia. Okay, gonna go wash off again. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed a few things that have kind of wet effect shades or something that might be kind of wet effect so I can show you side by side how these compare to others in case you have other wet effect shadows or like that kind of shadow. So I'm gonna put three wet effects on my arm and then do the other stuff in comparison. So we've got Delilah, Sheen, and Mia. Move those out of the way. I'll do Delilah, Sheen, and Mia. So you can see Sheen is definitely a Sheen. And the first thing that I thought of was the Urban Decay Moon Dust shadows. So this is Space Cowboy and feels very similar to Sheen. So that here. It's a little bit more sparkly, but very similar. So if you wanted this for Sheen, you and you I only I would just buy. <laughs> I would buy that. And then here is Lithium. I'll put that right here. It's even more cool toned. This is I got this instead of the Makeup Bar Mario palette because I really just wanted it for these two shades that he had. You can see those are even more sparkly. I think these are more of a wet effect. And then when I think of wet effects, I often think of the gold palette and these shadows up here. So this is Sparks and Kava. People generally refer to these as more wet effect shadows. So here is Sparks and here is Kava. They're a little thinner, less, these have more base to them but I do really love those. These definitely have more of a base than those. Um, and when you say sparkling wet effect, I immediately thought of this shade from Midnight Sun. This is also in Divine Rose 1, which is the same shade in both. And it is definitely more sparkling, but when I read sparkling wet effect, this is what I was kind of picturing. You can see that is even more so so I'd say these are kind of a, an, an in-between between these wet effects and this sparkling wet effect. Similarly, I grabbed my new Ismea palette. I'm gonna grab these two shades here. That one has a green effect. This one is very similar to the Pat, but kind of blue. Those are even more sparkling. These are definitely not as sparkling as those or as shiny. So if you really want shine, you've got these. What effect, these are more similar to the Urban Decay, but a little less sparkly still somehow. And then if you have the Oryx Smoke Reflex, this is Defiance, the topper shade from that. Put that down here, you can see very similar, actually very similar to Sparks, but a little bit more to it. Still kind of shinier, I think, and more wet effect. Sheen really is like a highlighter, like a sheen highlighter. It's really beautiful. And then I grabbed Lisa Eldridge. This is the shade Cressida in her Liquid Lurex. I'll put that, I'll just put that up here. This is definitely not as sparkling, but when it blended out on the lid does give a really nice sheeny wet effect. So I wanted to compare that. 
And then I grabbed the Petite Shimmer Koi. So this is the mini Koi. I feel like these are a little more metallic, but this is, you know, iridescent. This is an iridescent, so. Those are a little smoother. There's no sparkle to them. But they do give a sheen. So they're not gonna, the sparkle is what gives the wet effect and the wet look to it. So if you really want just the wet effect shades, I would just buy the Urban Decays, although this is darker than these, but you know, they are, they did say they are expanding the range soon, so. I have some others here, like the Surratt. I don't think the Surratt's gonna be that similar. It's not as sparkly. It's gonna be more like a sheen and glow. Yeah, that's more of a glow than a sparkly and wet. So hopefully this is helpful. And I'm gonna go wash my arm off again. And then I am done swatching for a while. Okay, so time for uh, the makeup look. I've already done one look and I will talk about that probably at the end, um, but, uh, and insert pictures and videos and stuff of that. But I wanna do one more look on camera. Uh, there's, I thought about doing more like multiple looks, but there's so much content out on this palette already. It just felt kind of redundant, but if you would like a multi-looks video for inspiration, let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to do something like that. Really excited by this palette. I know it's boring and basic, but it's still really pretty. It's, I think this is gonna get a lot of use. I think this is gonna be a very popular palette. I mean, you can tell from the hype. So, um, the first look I did, I used Vague, uh, Vague, Silhouette, and Mesh. Mesh being the sparkliest of the metallics. Um, I asked my husband, I was like, what metallics should I use? And he said that one, so that's what I did. Today, I really wanna wear Delilah, I think. Um, I wanna try the wet effect on my lid. Um, I also really wanna use Filigree. So maybe I'll do like Delilah over most of the lid and the Filigree here. Um, for my makeup right now, I'm wearing my Surratt foundation, um, a little bit of the Givenchy concealer, basically my go-to makeup lately. <laughs> um, same eyebrows as lately, the Kosas brow pencil with the Surratt pomade. And then uh, for bronzer, I used the Trixie cream bronzer again to give that a go. Still really liking it, I've used it three or four times now. Um, can be very natural or built up pretty well. It's very creamy. And, and then I'm wearing Maiden's Blush from RMS. And uh, I wanted to give, I just recently got the Melt Finishing Powder. Um, I got the shade Medium. Uh, it's Glowy Finishing Powder. I will probably use this in another video. Uh, maybe try it out and talk about it in a trying new makeup kind of video. But so far, really liking it. Um, and then for lip, I have one of the House Labs lip lacquers. This is the shade Sepia Shine. Um, I was gonna wear my Lisa Eldridge lip gloss, but I've worn that a lot lately, so I felt like mixing it up. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of my Ars, NARS, wow, I can't talk today. <laughs> NARS eye primer down. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a clean brush. This is a Refer 01 brush, my one of my go-to for starting any look. And I'm gonna try out, I wanna try Stone and Tender. I wanna stick with the more cool tones. I already know Mesh is kind of ashy on me, um, and Fair is definitely like a maybe inner corner shade, but that's it. So let's see what Stone looks like on my skin tone. So picks up nicely, and you can see that like pinky taupe base. I will scoot in and let's put that right here. Okay, so that is, definitely shows up. This might look kind of ashy on darker skin. I have not watched really a lot of videos on this. I need to watch Jamila's, but 
because it's got that slightly that taupe nest to it so it's a, it's got that little bit of purple as you build it up but there is a little bit of warmth a little bit of rosiness as it blends out which is really pretty and this is just going to be a really simple kind of everyday look what most people probably do with this palette or would do with this palette I should say so that is the shade stone I really like that I like cool tones against my skin because I'm olive. Some warm shades really, really pop, uh, or some warm, some cool shades really, really pop nicely. Some cool shades make me look sick. So it's always, you know, a little tricky to see what's gonna work. But I really like that. That looks really pretty. So I'm just taking a little bit more and blending it through the crease, just making sure that it's visible. Okay, I really like that. I'm gonna do this on the other eye real quick. Okay, so really like the way this matte is working. It's performing like a typical Natasha Denona shadow. Um, I do wanna take a little bit of tender and see how that adds depth because this is not a lot of depth, um, but I also wanna try Fair. So Fair is, the like creamy beige shade. I've seen some people who it literally matches their skin tone. For me, it definitely will not. But I wanna take that a little bit on just the same brush and put it on the inner corner and see how it looks as an inner corner shade. See if it is brightening enough. I think on darker skin, it would brighten very well. On me, it's a very soft, inner corner. Not bright enough to be a real inner corner shade, but does add a little bit of brightness. Okay, not mad about that. Okay, so let's take a little bit of tender. I'm just, again, using the same brush. Picks up very nicely. And I'm gonna put that right here. Definitely slightly darker. I think she really made a nice gradient with these. Um, I have swatches from Steven that I can include at the end when I give my final thoughts. And it really is a nice gradient of like mesh, stone, tender. They're like the same shade, but in a gradient. So if you struggle with blending, I think that's really useful for you having that gradient available. Really liking that. And I'll probably get a little bit of warmth from the shimmers. Eh, it's a pretty cool tone, but they're like not purpley taupe like these. And I really, those blended beautifully together. Sometimes you need to go back in with the first shade to get a seamless blend, um, but I don't think I do. Um, and that is a benefit of Natasha Denona's matte formula. Okay, so let's try Delilah. So again, I will have done swatches already as you're at this point in the video, but I haven't done them yet. Um, but so I haven't touched Delilah, but it is this super sparkly shade right here. And it is the sparkling wet formula. So it and Nia are the sparkling wet. Sheen is the sparkling, what is it called? Sheen is glowing wet, that's it. So I'm picking that up with my finger. Oh, it feels very thin, but in like a good way. It feels kind of like one of the shades from the new Ismae palette. So I will definitely be doing those when I go back and do the comparisons. Really beautiful. I'm gonna wear this shade a lot, I think. Okay, so just grab my mirror and I'm just gonna put that all over. Obviously this is a sparkling formula, so you could, like a wet effect, you could wear this by itself with no mats. You could wear it as a topper. Or if I used like glitter glue or the intensify stick, it would be even more shiny. But I think it is exactly what it claims to be. 
It is a wet effect, but it is sparkly. There's a lot of multi-dimensional sparkle there. And I'm think I think that's coming across on camera. That is really beautiful. Okay, let's do the other side. It's so thin, it doesn't really, it doesn't feel like anything. This is why I wanted the palette. Like this shade, Sheen, Ella, and Filthy Gree were like the shades that I was like, yes. <laughs> okay, that, that is beautiful. And then it just came off pretty well, but you can see there's some slight particles there. It's kind of like when I use my Urban Decay shadows that do a similar effect. Um, and then testing it does pick up on a brush, at least on this. Just to have a little bit more precision. I have a feeling I'm gonna wear this all over my lid with Abandon pretty regularly. And that's just because it's that wet effect, I'm kind of tapping it into my crease. You could leave it only on the lid, but I wanna have that sparkle go up. Okay, really like that. Um, and then next, I do wanna take a little bit of filigree and put it on the outer part of the lid, I think. So I'm gonna pick that up with the same brush. Picks up nicely. And I'm just gonna tap it right here. It's just a little darker, a little, but it's still sparkly. Okay, it's just melting in. It's not doing too much, but adding, it's adding a little bit of that darker cool brown out there. So adding back in some of the structure. So with filigree, Without, I definitely see a difference in person. I could probably also just use Silhouette there or something, but really, really love this. Don't really need, feel the need to put anything under my eyes. Um, I do want to take a little bit of sheen and try it out on the inner corner too. It's a little peachy, so it might look a little different, but I just picked it up on a pencil brush. It's a Sigma. And it definitely adds a little bit of a sheen, which is exactly what it says it does. Put a little bit up here on my brow bone. I feel like sheen would be a nice highlighter. I'm not wearing one, so let's actually add that and see how it looks. Yeah, it just adds kind of a, there's a bit of a peachy base there, but it mostly just looks like a wet sheen. So I'm trying dipping this highlighter brush in to sheen. Let's see what it looks like as a highlighter. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, I really hope she comes out with more of this formula in other like base tones and depths. Kind of like how Urban Decay has Space Cowboy and Lithium and they have like different depths to those shadows. I hope she does the same because this has like a warm peachy undertone to it. So having different undertones, you could have really beautiful wet effects on the skin and really pretty highlighters. I, that is a really pretty highlighter. It just melts in and adds that wet glow. Okay, yeah, you can see just the, like, the wet shine. Okay, really happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna go off camera real quick and add in my mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, this is the finished look. Really quick and easy. Really, really love the way these perform. And after using, you know, the warm shades like wit and vague and silhouette and then using the depth of silhouette i can see this is going to be a really good daily friendly work go-to palette so very happy with this um so the other look 
I do have multiple, I have pictures and clips, but I used Muse and it was so sparkly, so pretty. I got lots of compliments on that look, but this is very different. This is definitely a wet effects, wet sparkle. That like sheen plus sparkle, really unique, really pretty. Really happy with this. Okay, so now on to the end of the video. Okay, so I am back. Uh, that was everything. That was the swatches, the comparisons, the tutorial. Um, I definitely have some thoughts, even though this is fairly new to me, so I will definitely keep forming. This is, you know, first impressions plus. I will keep, in, you know, building my relationship with this as I use it. I've only used it a couple times now and then, you know, done the swatches and comparisons, but I think I have a pretty good idea for first impressions. So really beautiful palette, really happy with this. I do think it's interesting that the sparkling foils are not as sparkling for the most part as they have been in the past. Um, that first look I did, I used Muse and it was the same super sparkling foiled look. I used it with Vig and Silhouette and it was a beautiful look, really loved that. For that look, I just put Vig kind of like I did today with uh, stone. I put vague on the outer uh, part of my lid and crease and blended it in, blended it out, used a little bit of wit uh, to blend, and then I put silhouette on the outer corner, and then I just put Muse all over the lid and wore it all day, really, really loved it. Actually, I think the pictures that I got were at the end of the day. So <laughs> really happy with how that performed no issues with longevity or falling off. I mean, I use an eye primer every time, but some things even with melt away. Um, and I haven't had any issues. This is consistent with her other formulas. I do think it's interesting that the, the creamy mats feel a little less creamy than they used to or normally do. Even in palettes I've had for two years, feel s maybe not creamier, but silkier. These feel a little more dense, um, but I think it's really beautiful. I don't think it's duping itself. I do have um, swatches on a different skin tone, thankfully. So thanks to my friend, Steven, uh, they, um, sorry, they just texted me. <laughs> um, they did a bunch of swatches. They're already on their Instagram. So I will link their Instagram um, and their YouTube channel. They don't use it anymore, but they did it on their, they have a light skin tone, very different from mine. They have more of a neutral to pink undertone. So uh, they did swatches of it. They, they are my favorite swatcher. Beautiful swatches. Um, I helped them decide on the order that they did them. And they did some comparisons. They compared it to the Viseart Kashmiri. Um, they compared it to Bebo, which I do not own. Um, they did side by side with Glam and like the minis, like mini Glam, mini nude, those. Um, and I can you can get similar vibes, but I she didn't dupe herself at all. And I'm very happy with that. Um, some brands do. I think she she does use the same shades over and over again sometimes, like Nude Mauve is in multiple palettes, but she uses the same name, so you know what it is. Um, but overall, I'm very happy with this palette. I'm excited to keep using it. It's still, well today it's gray, so my lighting might be weird. It is gray and overcast and 71 still, but it's been in the 90s and hot, so I haven't been wanting to wear makeup most days. But as it starts to cool off and become this weather all the time, I'm gonna be wearing this a lot with the other things that I've gotten recently. Um, and then you go when I want color. Um, but really, really happy with this so far. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other videos. I know Riley uh, just posted hers earlier today. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Um, lots of other people have videos. I will try to link some below that some friends uh, have done, but if you're interested in this, I think it's worth the money if you're in that price point. Um, and I don't think you would be mad at it if you're going into it knowing what you're getting, you know, with the colors. I think you should, especially if you're, if you're darker, watch darker skin tones. If you're lighter, watch lighter skin tones. I think most of the people I've seen post about this are in the light spectrum. I haven't really seen a lot of people around me and then I've seen people darker. So like Jamila, um, but yeah, I think it's a beautiful palette. I think she did a great job. I wish the Sparkling Fools were a little more foiled, but I think that they're like a good everyday version. So I'm gonna wear the hell out of filigree <laughs> this fall. So 
Um, yeah, if you're interested in this, you can get it from Sephora. The Sephora VIB sale, Rouge sale is coming up in November probably, I think. October, I don't know. Um, there's always the holidays, there's Black Friday. Or if you want it right away, you can always get it from Natasha Denona and use a code like Seeking Shifts from Riley or something to get 15% off. Um, I sadly do not have a Natasha Denona affiliate code, but I will have affiliate links below. So let me know in the comments below what you think. I hope this video was helpful. I hope the swatches were helpful and the comparisons and my thoughts on the formulas. I hope, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. Please tell me so. Please <laughs> engage with the video. These take a lot of work um, and engagement really helps. Um, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.